Welcome to the Fantasy Zone. Get ready. Hello, everyone. We are... We're back again. We're, we're back on our bullshit. I'm almost at 350 follows. That's... That's too many people. What the fuck? Thank you. Thank you so much for following. Thank you, um... Thank you, whoever... Whoever just followed. I actually didn't catch that name because I'm... Pretty terrible at this. <laughs> but that's fine. Let's, uh, let me just get the game and then Welcome we'll... To the fantasy zone. Get ready. Thank you for the follow, the Ragu. Let me get my game here and then we'll get the ball rolling. Hello, Eternal Soldat. We're about to, about to play some, about to play some Metal Gear 2 today. That's the plan. What? And then we... Whip. There we go. Oh, what's up, Feudal? I'm Asan as well. Everyone's here. Let's soak in this intro. Yeah, this soundtrack is probably better than the previous games. Just because there's a lot more tracks than in the previous game. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You get the impression from how uh, how infrequently they show names in this intro that this game was developed by a small team, but the credits at the end do not reflect that fact. <laughs> There's Kojima. Yo, where's the hot blondes? We'll get there. Don't worry about it. We'll get there, Chroma. I gotta get through the cool Metal Gear blueprints. <laughs> no, I don't think Hideo Kojima went on to do much after this. <laughs> Where is Norman Reedus? Where is Norman Reedus and his funky fetus? Metal Gear. A much cooler looking Metal Gear than in the previous game. <laughs> it's all big and green and shit. I love the way that intro text pops up. Now I would press start here, but we actually have, uh, we have an actual intro scene that we gotta get. Here we are. Here's the actual intro.
late 1990s, the world is about to enter a period of stabilization. Oh yeah, we're gonna see some poisonous hamsters, Ray Smash. <laughs> With the relations between large nations like the US, the USSR, and China thawing, various regional conflicts are facing reconciliation as well. The nuclear threat that has troubled us this century is now a thing of the past. Man, this text scrolls really slow. <laughs> military regime was established in Zanzibar land, a small country bordering the USSR, China, and the Middle East. Yeah, so the lore here is... All the nukes in the world are pretty much uh, disposed of or disarmed, except for the ones that were seized by Zanzibar land. So they're, they're the only nuclear power in the world at this point. Nice misspelling on the word reared. That's fine, we're not going to worry about that. Meanwhile, the world's oil reserves, which were said to last for 30 years, were drying up more quickly than expected. The world was facing a serious energy crisis without being able to obtain a safe alternative. Energy to oil. So there's a, there's a missile crisis, but also an oil crisis. There's a lot going on all at once in this game. During these times, a Czech biologist named Dr. Keo Marv developed Oilix, a microbe that's said to refine high-quality oil. Yeah, oops, all oil. <laughs> Once more, the world transitions into a state of latent hostility centering around Oilix. On his way from Czechoslovakia to attend an American scientific conference, Keo Mart is kin uh, kidnapped to Zanzibar land. <laughs> so this guy, Keo Marv, who made this uh, alternative to oil, Oilix, gets kidnapped. And you know, you gotta, you gotta go to Zanzibar land and deal with not just the nukes, but this oil thing as well. <laughs> yeah, I got the EPA hired snake, yeah. Alright, now we can get the ball rolling. Love that loading screen. Oh my god, this is snake. Arrived at entrance point. Snake right on time as usual. Solid Snake, of course, would ruin his reputation for being on time later on in the series. So, uh, before we go any further, we should address the elephant in the room. That, yeah, Snake is just Mel Gibson, and Colonel is Richard Crenna from Rambo. <laughs> That's, uh... There are some traced faces in this game. <laughs> Gonna begin Operation Intrude F. To the fantasy zone. Get ready. Thank you for the follow, Gran Chirizo. Obviously, in the PS2 version, or the, uh, the Snake Eater version of this game, they changed the portraits to more closely match, you know, how those characters look today. But back in 1990, these characters didn't have an established look, so Kojima was just like, fuck it. 
What are some 80s action stars we can steal the likenesses of? <laughs> and there's our radar. We actually have a radar in this game. Its range is nine screens with you in the middle. The radar deactivates when an enemy finds you because the enemy can detect the radar signal. So we're looking for Dr. Keo Marv, who was kidnapped. Dr. Marv has an emitter in his tooth. If you come near him, he'll show up on your radar as a red dot. That'll be important. All right. So we've got, uh, we actually have a crouch in this game. We can crouch and we can crawl. That was not a thing in the previous games. First thing we're going to want to do is go into this truck. Get this ration. Contains beef, pork, crackers, and chocolate. Believe it or not, the contents of this ration will be important later. <laughs> Oh, we have a call. Crawl and sneak through the gap in the fence. I guess that's a fair enough tutorial because crawling was a new thing in this game. <laughs> yeah, he does kind of still steal faces, yeah. That's fine, we're not going to worry about that. So we gotta get through here, but we have to wait for this guy to uh, look in a different direction. See if we can't crawl through here before the other guard comes back. Alright, cool. As a ration B3, this one contains ham, cheese, spaghetti, and coffee. This will also be important later, believe it or not. Whoa! That was a close one. The guard's vision is slightly better in this game than the previous one. Sneaking in from the front is impossible. Look for an alternative way in. Why don't we do that, chat room? Also... I enjoy that if you have the cigarettes equipped, you can actually see it in the uh, on the codex screen here. And with the cigarette, he, he really unmistakably looks like Mel Gibson. <laughs> so we're going to distract these guards by punching the wall. This is the first game to have uh, noise distractions for guards. For 1990, that shit was probably bonkers. You find it hard to play this because the map doesn't show the vision cones? Yeah. Also, this is a big-ass pistol. Do you see the size of this fucking handgun chat room? <laughs> Sadly, it's not that big in our hand. <laughs> so this is going to be the stream where we uh, constantly compare this game to Metal Gear Solid 1. As you can see, we started outside, and now we're crawling inside from the vents. This is the uh, first of many parallels you'll see if you're familiar with Metal Gear Solid 1. It's almost the same game, as you'll find out. <laughs> oh, Metal Gear Solid 1 is pretty good, Vash. You should play that one. Yeah, Twitch Ghost. The yeah, one of the problems is you can kind of see um, you can you can see where they are, but you can't tell what direction they're facing in unless you use the binoculars. So now we're inside. I'm Holly, Holly White. 
I entered Zanzibar land a month ago as a journalist. I think I can be of assistance. So we have a new contact. Yeah, there's the blonde. <laughs> that didn't take long. Let's call Colonel again. What do you got for me, Colonel? If you're in trouble, contact McDonald Miller. There's a name chat room. He's our former survival master. He has a lot of useful ideas. Let's call. How about we call Master Miller? <laughs> Absolutely nothing. Thanks, Miller. I, uh, I don't, there's a guy in the next room, but I don't know which direction he's facing. All right, chat room, I'll rise for the Zanzibar Land National Anthem. Anyway. <laughs> This should be a decent enough spot. We're trying to get to the elevator. This is our immediate objective. This guy is in the way. And we've got to unequip our gun. Because taking these dudes out without a silencer is all kinds of trouble. We don't want to do that. You gotta punch the elevator buttons. I was always a big fan of that. <laughs> now this floor this floor makes noise if you walk on it so we're going to crawl when there's guards around oh the transition screen was the foxhound logo You're, you'll see that on every transition pretty much Grab key card one. We're back on the, uh... We're back on our key card bullshit. Thankfully, it's not as obnoxious in this game. Yeah, just keep on walking. Here are the binoculars. I find the binoculars to be more useful in this game because the, um... The guard, like, the state of the guards does not reset when you, uh... When you leave the screen and come back. They actually have this kind of, like, persistent state throughout the entire floor. So, like, I could look to my left to see what direction the guard will be facing before I enter the screen. I think up is where we want to go. We'll see how well I remember this. <laughs> is there anything under these tables? I don't think so. These, uh, sensors right here. As long as you're not in their red, uh, zone, you won't get caught. You can detect infrared sensors using cigarette smoke. What a concept, what a concept. Whoops, I called him twice. Yeah, there's no infrared goggles in this game, just the cigarettes. They actually added infrared goggles in the, um, in the Snake Eater version. Because the cigarettes were changed so that it slowly deals damage to you, like it normally does now. 
But in this game, the cigarettes didn't do that. You could just have them on all the time. Oh yeah, Miller looks... None of the characters look, uh... None of the characters look particularly correct in this game. <laughs> there are some pretty... There's some pretty wild portraits later on, we'll see. So we've got the gas mask, we're gonna need that. Yo, what's up, Mysterio64? Is that Pokemon Puzzle League sensation? Mysterio64, I almost ran right into that. Now we gotta go the other way. We'll be able to take this, uh... We'll be able to take this left door a bit later. Yeah, the Snake Eater version. It's got some changes to it. It's not just the portraits, there's some other things that were changed as well. Yeah, I'm a big fan of this game, Vash. Uh, cannot recommend this game enough. I don't think I can go that way yet. Gas mask on. You can see your oxygen gauge in the corner. Is Ghost Babble good? I actually have no idea. Alright, I'll take Gran Chorizo's word for it. Now you can see the red dot on our radar. So this is who we were looking for. That was fast. Uh-oh. Dr. Marv is not here, trying to chick, uh, trick us with a cheap emitter. You foxhounders are quite out of date. Oh no. That wasn't who we were looking for, chat room. This is Black Color from NASA Special Forces. Show me how good you foxhounders really are. Alright, so we've got the first boss fight in the game. There's not much to this one, you just kind of shoot at him. <laughs> if you stay on the bottom, I find that he doesn't teleport all over the place as often. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Black Color, also known as Black Ninja. I'm not I'm not sure which which name is better. <laughs> Neither one is great. Whoop. Where are my rations? Unlike in Metal Gear 1, the rations uh, are used automatically when necessary. So that's a step up. Yeah, he's throwing shurikens. We got him. He knows who Snake is, isn't that interesting? How do you know my name? It's me, Schneider. Kyle Schneider, remember me? So this is Schneider from Metal Gear 1. This was the, uh, this was the man who almost told us who was in charge of Outer Heaven, but he mysteriously disappeared before he could say. Snake, you're still too immature. It's not them who tried to kill me, it's your country. After you beat Metal Gear, NATO conducted an air raid. Resistance members, women and children in Outer Heaven, we were all abandoned. Many died in the flames. Children in Outer Heaven were formerly war orphans. They didn't like the existence of those children to go public. <laughs> I don't know what this line is supposed to be. I've always found this line to be strange. <laughs> Someday they'll forget you too. However, he... He rescued us, gave us new land and new families. 
Who do you mean? Soon you will learn of his greatness. Snake, I owe you and hold no resentment. It's not against his will. I'll tell you where the doctor is. The guard of his cell is a green beret. Look for him on the first floor. Tell him and then you can reach the cell. Okay, so now Schneider's dead. Oh, I love this fucking song. I mean, we knew... I mean, we thought Schneider was dead at the end of the first game, but now he's super dead. Now he's super for reals he's dead. Gotta put the gas mask back on. Alright, cool. I think... What? <clears throat> Yo, Bluto, thank you for the raid. How did, uh... How did that weird... PlayStation Inuyasha game go that you were playing? <laughs> but, oh, you know what? I gotta get to, um... The elevator's not what I want. We gotta be over here. We have one more item to get. Are there perchance any large men in here? I don't know how to answer that question. <laughs> so this room is a problem. We've got the lasers to deal with, but we've also got this camera to deal with. And we can get into this room. <clears throat> we can get into this room just fine to get the mine detector, but getting out of the room is a problem because we don't know where the camera is and the binoculars do not work when you're in this room. Fortunately, uh, the place we're trying to get is right outside this room, so we're just going to book it and not give a fuck. Just going to crawl in here. <laughs> And now we're in the sewers. Oh, it's useless. I almost picked up a cool thing, but it doesn't do anything. You gotta get out of this room before you get crushed by the uh, garbage thing. <laughs> Philbert has increased his friendship with Kagome. Is that gonna be a multi-part series, Bluto? Are you are you coming back? You coming back to that game? It looked pretty good. <laughs> no, no, no. Second floor is where we're trying to get. Here we are. Let's see here. We need to get left. What direction is he facing? He's facing downwards, so we can probably just crawl right up to him. Yeah, cool. Yeah, so we're here to get the... Here to get the silencer. Now we can fire our gun in peace. Get some ammo, too. Before we get back to the elevator. What are these fuckos doing? Alright, that one's coming down. Alright, I think we're clear. Cool. Uh oh, he heard a noise. Missed the button. Oh, he's probably fine. It was, uh... They were just... They were, they were airsoft rounds, right? Yeah, 
Hey, there are rubber bullets. He's probably definitely fine. He's probably maybe... totally probably fine. I wonder if crawling will avoid the detection of this man. Nope. Cool alert music. Does this game have the same jank where you can only be spotted in the same line? No, they actually have proper they have proper vision cones in this game. It's quite a quite a step up from the previous game. Uh-oh. Alright, cool. Alright, so here's where we're trying to get. There's the green beret that just ran uh just ran into the forest here, so we're gonna follow him. We've gotta we've gotta follow this man. He's gone, where'd he go? I think I went too quick. <laughs> Let's try that again, chat room. So there's a weird section of the game. Basically, you just uh, you just follow this guy. And as long as you avoid detection, he'll lead you exactly where we're trying to get. He looks behind him every so often, so you have to... Not, uh, you can't tail him too closely, basically. <laughs> yeah, he's very, uh, he's very cautious. I'm very glad that they decided to have, like, a five-second music loop for the section that takes a while. Very good design decision. Yeah, yeah, the stealth mechanics are... For 1990s, like, the shit you can do... Excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse me, chat room, what just happened? So sometimes this sequence doesn't work properly. <laughs> we'll try that again. Things not working properly is going to be a running theme on this channel. But that's fine. <laughs> but, um, yeah, for 1990, the fucking the stealth mechanics are really cool. And they were probably really new and different. I can't think of any other... I can't think of any other games this old that had any kind of stealth mechanics. Yeah, I would, the, they, they probably... I'd say that they got the hang of it with Metal Gear Solid. But they took a shot here, and it kind of works. And the, uh, the game is great for what it is. This is my personal favorite Metal Gear game. All the jank notwithstanding. <laughs> Some of those stealth mechanics from Metal Gear ended up in Boktai. I have not played Boktai. I've heard of it. That was the game with the, um... We did it again, motherfucker. So I think on that last, uh... That last section of that screen, we need to tail him a little closer. Yeah, yeah, I've heard good things about Boktai. That, that was a Kojima game too, right? That was the that was the game with the with the cool like sun sunlight mechanic or whatever. We're gonna get this chat room. 
Don't know how well it would work on a ROM since no sunlight stuff. I would imagine that somebody's... Uh, somebody probably worked out how to emulate that properly. There we go. This is what we want. And hopefully the rest of this sequence cooperates. Yeah, he tries to bait you, he does another quick one. Now we're back on the first screen. This man is leading us in circles. It's a very long route. He's very, uh... He's very easily spooked. He wants to make extra sure no one's following him. Yeah, you need to not move right there, or else you'll definitely get spotted. And he starts running. To be fair, we, uh... Well, I'm not gonna say I- I'm not gonna say I fucked it up, just the game didn't cooperate twice. So it probably seems a little bit longer than it ought to be. But it's a- it's a pretty long sequence either way. We're almost at the end of it. They carried a lot of things over. They carried a lot of things over from Metal Gear 2 to this game. Thank you for the thank you for the host lunar. They carried a lot of things over from Metal Gear 2 to this game. I am glad the uh following the green beret through the woods sequence is not part of it. <laughs> Alright, cool. We're free, chat room. This is the this is the house that we were ought to uh, we were meant to get to. So we get in here and we can hear somebody banging on the walls. Yeah, we just shot him. He's probably fine, don't worry about it. Now this uh this tapping on the wall is actually... What? What? Where's my... It's a good thing we've got the manual chat room. So this, uh... This tapping on the walls is actually copy protection. I don't remember where in the manual it was here. Let me see if I can find the chart. We're not actually... We're not going to participate in this properly, because I already know what I'm supposed to do, but... Just gonna look through the manual here. Oh, you can see in the bottom right corner there, you can see that the uh, guards have their vision cone 45 degrees. Yeah, thank god we can all read Japanese, right? I know I can't. <laughs> okay, here's the chart in the top right corner. You're supposed to, um... You're supposed to decipher these sequences of uh, taps on the wall and turn that into... letters? or numbers or whatever, and then eventually you end up with a codec number. That's the, uh... That's the deal there. So we're just gonna call the fucking number. I believe it was, uh... 
82. And here's uh, Petrovic from the last game, also known as Dr. Albert Einstein. <laughs> He's just, he's just dead-ass Einstein. <laughs> yeah, here's, uh... Here's, uh... <laughs> we thought we were being led to, uh, Keo Marv, the other guy that we're here for, but we've accidentally stumbled up upon Dr. Petrovic, the guy who developed Metal Gear in the first game. Yeah, Snake's like, what are you doing here? <laughs> Marv and I were friends. I was caught together with him. Dr. Marv was transferred to the tower building a few days ago, a tall building some miles to the north. Oh yeah, there's a lot of stolen faces in this fucking game. Snake, can you guess why they keep me alive? Because they need you, so... <laughs> it's Metal Gear, Snake. They have one. Here. <laughs> Three years ago, you destroyed only an experimental one. They have a new Metal Gear, even more powerful. And it was Metal Gear that raided the nuclear bases. Correct. Metal Gear is a nuclear mounted walking tank, capable of firing missiles from any terrain. Blah 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 blah. Zanzibar Land gained a unique nuclear force in the world. Moreover, it now wants to own the alternative energy Oilix. Now, can you see who is behind all this? Big Boss! <laughs> His scheme is to hold the world with Metal Gear and Oilix. Never give them Oilix. Science is not for murderers. Marv has a strong will but a weak heart. How long can he endure their interrogations? <laughs> they use drugs on him, we're in big trouble. Marv, like me, has a small transceiver in his body. It was given to us by the female STB agent who escorted us. You can contact him if you know the frequency. <laughs> Why does Metal Gear Solid 5 tie into this? Yeah, this happens, um... Ah, shit. I don't know my... I don't know my Metal Gear timeline that well, but... This is, um... It's the direct sequel to Metal Gear 1, but I think Metal Gear 1 happens... right after Metal Gear Solid 5, right? So it goes Metal Gear Solid 5, then Metal Gear... Metal Gear 2... and then Metal Gear Solid 1. I believe that's the that's the order these take place in. A chobum plate wall divides us. Blowing it up is impossible. Leave me alone and rescue Dr. Marv. My daughter Ellen still likes you very much. She can't forget you. She won't marry any other man. She's got the hots for Mel Gibson. <laughs> anyway, I know the zoologist Josef Norden who lives nearby. He'll help you in animal matters. Believe it or not, we're going to need this number. Alright. So that was a lot of lore. <clears throat> there's a lot of there's a lot more lore in this game than the previous game. Let's call the uh let's call that number we were just given. Why does Foxhound use animal names as code names? I think I feel like I've seen this face before too. I don't know who this guy is. Animals don't suit battlefields. <laughs> so we'll call that guy whenever we need uh, to figure shit out about animals. There's quite a quite a few animals in this game that we'll have to deal with. <laughs> it's time to oil up. Yeah, is that was that Hakan? Is that who that was? <laughs> <laughs> so it's a good thing we grabbed that mine detector, because we're about to need it. Snake, watch out. You're in a minefield. Tell me if this sounds familiar, chat room. Who are you? Just one of your fans. <laughs> where, oh where have I seen that codec call before? So we're crawling around and we're collecting the landmines that I can see on the radar because of the mine detector. Yep, 
Yeah, you'd think he'd know. But no. <laughs> How many mines is that? Whoop. 13. 13 should be enough, but we might as well collect these last two anyway. <clears throat> what is that fucking four-part oil emo? <laughs> That's pretty good. They say swamp is dangerous because you will drown. But a big truck ran over there. You believe me. It's just a child in the fucking swamp. That's fine. Not gonna worry about it. So this is a, this is a silly part of the game. We need to navigate this swamp. As you can see, we can kind of walk on it just fine. But if we go in any of the wrong directions, Snake will begin to sink. And if you... If you sink for too long, you just die. So there's a bit of a, it's a bit of trial and error involved, as you try to. Yeah, he sinks pretty quick. So if you see him sink, you need to, uh, you gotta back the fuck up. <laughs> hmm. And it should go back to the right. It's the most, like, it's the most unnecessarily twisty-turny route you can imagine. <laughs> I think that, I think this way is a dead end. It looks like it's the right way, but it doesn't actually lead to that platform, so you gotta go up this away. Because of course you do. Wh yeah, apparently a truck just ran through it, no problem. Trucks go in and out here many times. Apparently. I'll believe it when I see it, kid. <laughs> no, I talked to you. Here we are. There's a lot of there's a lot of kids in this game. Alright, cool. This is where we're trying to get. Can we go this away? Nope. No, we cannot. We're going to, uh, we're going to equip a few things ahead of time. We're going to equip our gas mask. And we're going to equip the landmines we just picked up. A guest? Haven't had a guest in a long time. You've arrived at a good time. I was just going for a run. I'm running, man. The fastest mercenary in the world. Yeah, I agree. This boss is fucking, uh... I I'm a big fan of this boss, actually. <laughs> you can see him on the radar. <laughs> as he goes to the other rooms. He's not actually running that fast. <laughs> but that's fine. We're not gonna worry about that. Let's move on to the main part. Hear the tone? It's nerve gas. If you beat me before the gas gets you, you'll survive. It's a race against time. So here's the gimmick with Running Man. You can see him on the radar in any of these four rooms. And no matter what you do, you cannot catch him. There's absolutely no way you'll ever see this boss while you're fighting him. Let's, uh... What? What is the- what's the boss number? What's the boss advice number? Ask George Kessler, once our military advisor. He knows everything about mercenaries and war machines. 140.93. So we're gonna call our... Gonna call our boy George Kessler. A.K.A. Dolph Lundgren. A.K.A. Ivan Drago. <laughs> Running man, a former short-range runner at the Barcelona Olympics. Runs 100 meters in 9.69 seconds. Banished from the Athletes Association for doping. Joined European terrorists after that. Your leg's never gonna catch him. Try to set up traps for him. Use his speed against him. That is good advice. 
But first, we're going to leave the room to get some air back. And I'll show you... Here's how you got to fight this boss. You got to go into this skinny hallway, right? You got to force him into a position where he cannot dodge these landmines. And then you run back this away to force him to run into the mines. And the screen will flash every time he walks over one. This is the only way you can hit this guy. <laughs> now we're already running out of air. <laughs> He should die to these mines, though. Maybe one more. We'll put down, like, two more mines. Alright, we got him. That's all there is to that fight. Pretty, pretty cool gimmick, I would say. My speed turned against me. What's your name? <laughs> a cheetah defeated by a snake. Why? Oh my god, nice zinger, snake. Nice fucking zinger. He drops card number three. We're gonna get this Mayan back. <laughs> he couldn't run from death. The problem with being faster than light is that you can only live in darkness. <laughs> I really, really hate men with guns. It's a good thing I'm only holding a landmine. There were a lot of missiles here some time ago, but they moved them to the factory west of the first floor. Yeah, so we gotta get back to the, um... We gotta get back to the the first building. Unfortunately, that means we gotta deal with this fucking swamp again. Whoop. Nope, that's not it. This is what we want. Why do these kids know so much? That's a fantastic question. Whoop. We go all the way left. Very, very smart kids. <laughs> Sleeper agents, yeah. That's what it is. But one of them is like... Uh-oh. Okay, that was a close one. One of them is like a kid liquid snake or something. <laughs> well, no, this game takes place close enough to uh, Metal Gear Solid 1 that he wouldn't be a kid. Okay. Takes place about six years from Metal Gear Solid 1. Are the mines back? Yes, they are. Let's collect more. How do you think the guards... How do you think the guards feel about Snake? They just see him crawling around in the sand like a fucking idiot? I think it's card two to get back in. <laughs> they don't spot him and raise the alarm out of his second-hand embarrassment. Yeah, that's probably it. So we're here to get two things. First of all, we're going to get... This is a purely convenience item, and something that the first game really should have had. Uh-oh. I was a little too slow on the trigger there.
All right, cool. So now that we have the first three ID cards, we can trade them in for the red card. The red card simultaneously acts as cards one through three. So we don't need to fucking guess at it. <laughs> like we did in the first game. There he go. Yeah, it's it's pretty convenient. Instead of having to deal with this like Metal Gear One bullshit where you've got eight cards and have no idea which card to use on which door. <laughs> We've gotta go down this way. Whoa, okay. That was a close one. Went through almost the entire game without getting that. Well, it's kind of, it's. I mean, it's out of the way, and it's optional anyway. It's not something you need, per se. It's just, it's just a convenience. This is why we're here. We're here for these stinger missiles. This game actually has stinger missiles, chat room. Alright, so we're probably about to get spotted, because there's a fucking guy. Unless we, uh, we might be able to wait it out, and then he'll have already turned around by the time we walk out. Let's see if he's turned around yet. Oh, he's gone. Cool. Let's get this ammo. Yeah, we got stinger missiles, dude. Anti-aircraft missiles. What a what could we possibly need anti-air missiles for, chat room. Oh, shit. I wasn't paying attention. I'm out. If you find a hiding place, you actually go into evasion mode, and then if you stay hidden for a while, the alert's over. What a concept, what a concept. Yeah, they'll never find you in the crawly hole. <laughs> So we gotta get back to the desert. Fortunately, we never have to deal with that swamp again. But we'll probably go back on this screen many times. I would say groundbreaking is a good way to put it. There's so much, um, there's so much shit. There's so much shit in this game that's never been, that had never been done before in 1990. It's certainly been done since, but this game had a lot of, like, cool ideas that at the time were brand new and exciting. It's a shame this game never came out uh, stateside. It was a Japan exclusive until Snake Eater came out. What we're seeing here is just an English, uh, this is just an English translation of the MSX game. Be careful, Snake. You're walking on Noriko sand. It was imported from as far as Okinawa of Japan. Be careful. The sand squeaks when you walk on it. This sand makes noise if you run on it. Like so. So you gotta stay crawling. Get this ration. Now we're underneath this truck on the bottom right, but we gotta wait for this fucko to turn around. Alright, cool, let's go. It's actually real sand? Oh, I thought they were bullshitting. That's cool. <laughs> I didn't know. Singing sand. Hmm. I learned something today. Is there anything in here? No, there's not. So we're about to need these stinger missiles. Do you see the giant flashing uh, white box in the next room on the radar? I wonder what that could be, chat room. Well, 
Let me ask you a question, chat room. What's a Russian gunship doing here? So this is the Hind D. <laughs> Back again. You fight the Hind D in these four rooms. And it actually... It actually flies in this game, which is cool. That's a step up from the previous game where it just kind of sits there. <laughs> Hind D. Merely its name chills spines of grown-up men. Can carry 12,000 kilos. Max speed is 250 kilometers per hour. Armed with missiles and Vulcan guns. He can shoot you from high above. You haven't got a chance unless you have some anti-air missiles. Sweet Hosanna, we do. <laughs> so what we have to do here is we gotta whip our stinger out. And the way the stingers work in this game is you aim them on the radar. This is our crosshair on the radar. So you need to shoot slightly before... You gotta shoot slightly ahead of the hind, and then you fire. Oh, I missed. Try that again. Oh, we're missing missiles, chat room. I think you have to hit him four times, so we're not allowed to miss anymore. We'll have to go back and get more if we fuck it up, but that's fine. Ah, shit. Alright. Let's, uh, let's go back and get some more stingers. <laughs> Ooh, I'm under the truck. No, I need you to turn a different direction, thank you. <laughs> yeah, the hind does not follow you beyond those four rooms. He just he just he just waits there. <laughs> wondering. I guess it's wondering if we'll come back. Alright, cool. I mean, Snake is just one man. Surely the Hind D cannot be bothered to spend gasoline chasing one man. <laughs> oh, if it did follow you, that would suck ass. That would not be that would not be good times. I'm not sure how I dodged that camera just now, but I'm not going to question it. Cool. Cool, cool. Fortunately, the stingers are, you know, conveniently next to the desert. Can you imagine if we had to, like, deal with elevator bullshit to go get more? Oh, he didn't disappear, Taiki. We shot him. And he died. It was very tragic. His family misses him very much. I need you to not stand right there, sir. I need you to stand anywhere else. Need you to stand literally anywhere else. Here's the green beret again. He's alive, even though we shot him. So, uh... If we miss too many stingers this time, we'll probably just take a death on purpose, because that'll respawn us with our ammo, I think. Actually, maybe it doesn't. I don't remember too well. Well, hopefully we just get it right this time. I have too many rations. I've got, uh... Yeah, we've got a ration B1 and we've got a ration B3. We actually only have one of each. Oh no, that's not true. I have two of these, I have one of these. Once we killed Running Man, our capacity, uh... Our capacity for ammo and rations went up. 
No, the original version of the game has no no rank system to speak of. Metal Gear Solid 1 was the first game to do ranks. So in this game it really doesn't matter what you do. <laughs> oh, I'm just going for it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm pretty sure this game has no ranking system. Right, let's try this again. That is not where my stingers are located. We'll get him on the, uh, the screen transition from the bottom left room to the bottom right room. Oh, we missed that one. Perhaps we need to aim our shots. Uh, I think we have to lead our shots a little more than we are. I think it's interesting that uh, they had like two fights right in a row where you fight an entire boss without like looking at it. You have the running man fight where you'll never see him because he runs so fast and then you gotta fight the hind where if you're trying to, you know, be safe and not die, you wanna stay on any screen other than the one he's on. And if we land this stinger, we should get him. There we go. Look at all these hind D parts just laying on the ground. Some ammo from here. I think we've got a loading screen this away. Yeah. Mm -mm. <laughs> Rest in peace, whoever that blonde person was in the hind, yeah. He's just dead now. We'll never know. We'll never know the identity of that brave fighter pilot. <laughs> oh, you know what, chat room? Hold on. It turns out I am an idiot. This should be... This should be, uh... Whoop. Hold on. One sec. Let me... Whoop. Solid snake. There we go. Ha ha ha. Oh no, it's Metal Gear 2 Solid Snake. Streaming is a blow-up. Let's, uh... Get that right. There we go. I did it! <laughs> Never stream, chat room. Streaming's hard. We've got a call. Did I play Snake's Revenge on stream? I haven't, but I'd be down to try that. Uh, I've actually, I've never played Snake's Revenge before, so that'd be a fun experience. Maybe that game's actually good. I don't actually know anything about it. You can disguise yourself as some luggage. Use your old favorite, the cardboard box. From now on, contact me. Oh yeah, he changes his number here. So we so we gotta we gotta use the cardboard box to get on that conveyor. What the fuck was that shit? He turned on a dime. Anyway, we got the box. I don't even see these fuckos right now. And they should fuck off. Alright, cool. So we've got the box. The box still has no animation. It's got zero frames of animation. We need to hop on this conveyor to be taken into the second building. We're on chapter two of this video game. And we've got new music.
We also have a codec call. Oh no. Holly was discovered and caught. I succeeded to contact Dr. Marv, then this happened. She was taken uh, to the tower building, which we're conveniently already in. The noises from the left, an elevator. A pump-like noise from the right. From front and behind, sounds like water streaming. They failed to notice my wireless, but hurry. So first things first, we need to rescue Holly, who's gone and gotten herself captured. We've got this uh, incredibly silly room. It's a this the the first floor of this building is just a really big spiral shape. As you can see on the radar, I don't know what this shit's about. It doesn't seem like good good building design. Yo, what's up, Adam? How you doing? I believe this elevator is where we're trying to get. How's Metal Gear 2 going? Oh, it's going. We had to backtrack. Uh, we had to backtrack for Stinger missiles one time, but other otherwise, it's gone pretty well. I think. Does this go down anymore? No. Okay. Yeah, this is where we need to be. So now we're in the sewer. This is uh this is where Holly was taken, as indicated by the water that she said she heard. Oh yeah, on this screen over here, yeah, that was a kid. There's just a kid over there. Little girl playing around in the sewers for some reason. I'm not gonna worry about it. Here's another kid. Hey, are you a friend of that blonde girl? That's how we know we're in the right place. Here's some plastic explosives. Are the MSX games canon to the Solid games? Yeah, these are the... The MSX games are the prequel to the Solid series. Technically the prequel and the sequel, if you count the other games. Can you shoot the children? First of all, what is wrong with you? Second of all, yes you can! And you'll lose health if you do that, so we're not gonna do it! <laughs> One-eyed uncle told me to watch out for a man wearing green. I have to tell him that the girl is not here. Well, I can't argue with that. She's definitely not here. <laughs> now, the fact that you can hear uh, some kind of buzzing sound in this room, this is supposed to be the room that clues you in. You can see on the radar that there's a white dot to the right in the next room, so we're going to bomb this wall. And there she is. Oh, I should have equipped the cigarettes. Should have equipped the cigarettes for this conversation. What's the matter? Nothing, I just didn't know you were so beautiful. <laughs> Solid Snake already hitting on people this early in his career. We should have met earlier. About Dr. Marv, it seems he's safe. Seems? I thought you told me you contacted him. Oh no, Snake in this game is Mel Gibson. Hold on, where is my... Where is my Mel Gibson? There it is. <laughs> he's just... He's just dead-ass Mel Gibson in this game. Well, I haven't met him. He's detained somewhere. He's released a carrier pigeon... It may be carrying some kind of clue. Found it, but it escaped at the last moment. It flew up the elevator shaft to the rooftop. The soldiers are searching for it as well. Long story short, chat room, we are on the hunt for a pigeon. I want to collect more information as well. <laughs> Use the anti-air missiles on the bird, yeah. Hey, don't go too far. I don't want to be tapped, so I'll change my frequency. She changes her number too, yeah. Here, I copied card four. Use it wisely. Is 
We both live dangerous lives. It's not certain that we'll see each other again. We can always meet if we're alive. <laughs> Pretty cool how this game has actual, like, cutscenes. The first game certainly didn't. <laughs> There's a lot of there's a lot of storytelling in this game. Is when Kojima hit his stride <laughs> with putting way too much lore in his games. We gotta get back upstairs. Yeah, then you get Metal Gear Solid 4. Yeah. Sometimes you play Metal Gear Solid 4. I mean most of the, it's 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 mostly a movie, but sometimes you play it. <laughs> So this elevator way up here is where we're trying to get. Which means we have to circumvent the fucking spiral again. And that means we have to hide in here to wait out these people coming towards us. <coughs> I love this song. Maybe I should hydrate while I'm waiting. Mm. Mm -hmm. Delicious agua. Now we can go. Yeah, you hear me, but you're on the wrong side of the wall, sir. Pretty wild to have guards that can detect a noise in 1990, I must say. We're taking this elevator all the way up to the 10th floor. You cannot access floors 1 through 9, it just goes from 1 to 10. They concealed the doorways here. If you hit the wall, you can hear where they used to be. Like so. We'll have to go this away later, but not yet. So we're back to, uh, we're back to wall punching. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Kid, I need you to move out the way. Thank you. You can blow up the children, too. <laughs> you lose health. You lose health if you do it. I saw a lot of green pineapples in a room south of here. <laughs> yeah, not as much health as the children, yeah. Free grenades? What are you talking about, Vash? Said he saw pineapples. Saw a lot of green pineapple. Yeah, I talked to you. Thank you. One-eyed uncle is kind of father to us. He hates grown-ups. Who, oh, who could this one-eyed uncle be? It's a mystery. We'll never know. Need card four for this. We found grenades. Just kidding, it was grenades. <laughs> so this is the only reason we were here. We were here to collect these grenades because we're immediately going to need them. Yeah, One-Eyed Man can't possibly be Sean Connery. Yo, Mountain Man Jet is here! Now there's a man who knows magnitudes more about old games than I do. <laughs> uh, where am I going? I'm going back down. Oop. 
So now we need to get all the way into the center of this weird spiral floor. Because there's another elevator right in the middle that we need. Yeah, I'm a big fan of how there's... No they don't, like, flash or anything when you shoot them. They just... One frame, they're there, and then the next, they're gone. <laughs> there's no, like, damage animation. At least it only takes one bullet. This is what we need. And they heard that noise, but... Ha ha ha. It doesn't matter. So we need to take this elevator all the way up to the 30th floor. So this might take a while. What a thrill. With darkness and silence through the night. Alright. <laughs> this? A trap? <laughs> exactly, it's a trap to catch a fox alive. There, there's, there he is. I'm Red Blaster, I'll cook you slowly with my grenades. So, uh, this is the next boss, Red Blaster. Somebody help me figure out the perspective here. Is he on the ceiling? And he's lobbing grenades down? Or is he like... Or is he, like, behind the wall? It's- it's unclear. <laughs> I'm willing to- I mean, I'd also imagine it's the ceiling, but... The fact that you have to throw grenades... ...up at him, and then they, like, go down and hit him... I don't know, it's unclear. <laughs> anyway, all you gotta do is just chuck grenades at him. Let's see what, uh... whoops! Let's see what Dolph Lundgren thinks. Red Blaster, an explosion, an explosion maniac in red. Assassination elite from USSR Lumumba University. His method is setting booby traps crisscross. He immobilizes his enemies and finishes them off using a grenade launcher. Return grenades with grenades, that is a solid plan. This is pretty much all you gotta do. Yeah, he's a he's a very sneaky, very sneaky stealthy assassin who exclusively uses explosive weapons to deal with targets. <laughs> you never know you could go to a university to learn assassination. You've never been to assassin school? Whoops. Threw that one the wrong way. Everyone's been to assassin school. Come on, what is this, amateur hour? Alright, we got him. So he also had these, these trip wires. All over the room. These are something that we'll have to deal with a few times later on in the game. Basically, you just run at them for a while and they disappear. This is also the point of the game where we have to start watching out for the bottomless pits that the first game had. There's, uh, there's some of that starting, like, right around now. Like, back in that boss room, there was a pit somewhere, I don't remember where. Now we've got these spiral stairs. Who's calling? Door to the roof was sealed to prevent entrance of invaders, but that was a quick job so you can blow it up easily, I think. Hot diggity dog, it's a good thing we've got C4. Nope, let's try that again. This is what we want. So now we're on the roof. There is the, uh, there's the pigeon that we've been looking for. The pigeon supposedly has a secret message. 
but we have to catch the damn thing first. Problem is, if you try to approach it, it flies into the air. And it will just kind of keep flying. What can we do about this? Let's call our animal expert. There's more than 260 species of pigeon in the world. Their range of living extends from Europe to Southern Asia. That pigeon is trained to deliver messages. Pigeons are sensitive to noises and quite cowardly, but at the same time, they're hungry gluttons. You could lure it if you have peas or potatoes or something. But I guess there's no McDonald's on battlefields. Unsponsored, by the way. So what we need to do is we gotta look through our, uh, gotta look through our rations. We gotta find the ration B2, which has peas and potatoes. And then we can sneak up on this pigeon and it won't run away. Yeah, what kind of, what kind of McDonald's has peas? It's unclear. A paper is tied to the pigeon's leg. Help. W-I-S dot... O-H-I-O Kiyomarv. What does it mean? And then the pigeon dips. What does that message mean? You're supposed to figure this out. <laughs> I'm just gonna... I'm just gonna show you. So we're gonna take this message, alright? There's the message. This works best in a digital font. We're gonna take this message and we're gonna flip it over. And you can see the hidden codec number in the message. And there he is. Unfortunately, this man does not speak English. <laughs> What's this? I can't understand a word he's saying. Maybe I better ask Petrovic. That's a, that's a fantastic plan. Let's do that. Marv can only speak Czech and Slovak. He is also very shy. How about you, Petrovic? Only Russian and English. But Natasha can talk to him. Natasha, the STB woman who escorted you? She can talk to Marv. He'll accept her. Is she alright? Don't worry, she's a professional agent. She managed to get away by stealing an enemy uniform. Tell me if this sounds familiar, chat room. She should be undercover somewhere in this complex. Does she have a transceiver too? No, they took it when they caught her. Even though she wears an enemy uniform, she's still a woman. No other female soldier in this fortress. Look for her in women-only locations. Like the ladies' room. Where have I heard this before? So our new objective is to find Natasha, so that she can, uh, talk to Dr. Marv for us, because we don't speak the language. Why install a girl's bathroom if you only have men? That's a good question, we'll never know. What a thrill. <laughs> Snake Eater plays backwards. <laughs> Does Snake Eater play backwards if you jump off that ladder? I never tried it. <laughs> So I believe we have to, um, we gotta get back into the first building for a few things. It shouldn't take too long. Once you, uh-oh. We're not gonna be able to hide in the vertical tunnel, so we'll wait here for them to go by. It does, and plays at double speed. I mean, I could play Snake Eater at some point, I'd be down for that. I haven't actually played Snake Eater in a hot minute. Oh, 
Alright. Now we can be on our merry way. <clears throat> Wish your PC was good enough to stream Snake Eater. Yeah. I... Mine can probably handle it. Like, I can handle the game just fine. It's I don't know if streaming PS2 and playing PS2 at the same time is a problem or not. But this old shit works just fine. I need you to look a different direction, sir. No, no. Any other direction than that one. Alright, you know what? Fuck it. <laughs> what if I go back this way? I'm not sure how we just got out of that alert, but I'll take it. <laughs> we just kind of crawled back and forth and it was over. Hey, <laughs> stealth god. <laughs> The guards in this game are... they're a fair bit smarter than they were in the previous game, but that's still not saying much. <laughs> I would say that the guards' AI got really good in, uh... what, Metal Gear Solid 2? Where they start to, like, use the radio and call in backup and shit. I don't like this. I don't like this situation. All right. There's a guy coming right at me. Oh, we can reset the screen. Hold on, hold on, let me... You can usually get away with alerts by walking back and forth like this. Best way to deal with alerts is to keep, uh, keep forcing screen transitions. The game doesn't really know what to do about it. We're gonna wait for this guy in the next room to move. We stay right about here, neither one of them should see us. Oh, I tried. So we need to get up to the fourth floor because that's where Natasha is. But before that, we have a few things to pick up on the third floor. Let's do that. Now we can go this way. We were not able to do this before. I can see there's a person in the next room. I wanna make sure he's moving away from the door. Or maybe he just goes left and right back and forth, I'm not sure. Okay. All right, we got a robot mouse. It's basically just a, uh, it's like a remote control mouse. 
that can search for sensors and traps. More importantly, it can fool enemies who heard a noise. So you just send one out, and it just kind of goes all over the place. If a guard heard a noise and hasn't seen you yet, you can throw one of those out and then it'll see the mouse and be like, Oh, okay, that's what it was. There's a pit there, it almost got us. <laughs> I don't think the robot mouse has ever come back, but it should. <laughs> I think there's another one in this door. Yeah. We're not actually going to use them that much, though, truth be told. Woo. Somehow we got away with that. I'm not sure how. This is why we were here. We got some remote-controlled missiles. Nikita missiles, you might say. Okay, those don't respawn. We have some business in these gas rooms. If there's one gripe I have with this game, and I don't have many gripes with this game, I think this is one of the best Metal Gear games. It's probably the amount of backtracking. There's not... There's not a small amount of it. We cannot see shit in this room. Oh, baby, a triple. Here's the... Here are the night vision goggles. Infrared goggles that allow you to see no matter how dark. We don't have the... We don't have the actual, like, infrared goggles that you need to see lasers, but... We do have night vision goggles. Those were also new... At the time, the first game didn't have any night screens. Oh, I need the gas mask again. Did we kill the poisonous hamsters yet? That's gonna be like the last thing we do. I wouldn't worry about that. <laughs> gonna be waiting a while. Well, we weren't going to avoid that camera, now were we? Gas grenades. Gas mask back on. Oh, shit! You know what? Fair enough, you got me. Thankfully, we're right here next to the elevator, so we can just say fuck it and keep moving. This is a, uh... As you can see, this route is completely blocked off by lasers, so if you plan to take this quote-unquote shortcut, you have to trigger an alert. But as noted, the elevator's right there, so who gives a fuck? Excuse me, sir. Excuse me, sir. I'm sure you're all lovely people. I got no beef with you. All right, we're free. <laughs> now to the actual, now to the fourth floor, our actual destination. We just had to pick up some shit first.
most notably the night vision goggles. That was the main thing we were there for. Are you going to walk down? Yes, you are. What a nice guy. <laughs> Whoops. Perhaps I should have, uh... Perhaps I should have paid more attention there. What if we get a guy to walk out? Okay. Let me hide this away. That's the strat. Abuse screen transitions. We have only one lavatory here. It's in the southeast. I'm scared at night. That's a weird bit of extra information you just gave me, girl. If you catch a cold, go to the medical room to find pills. We are gonna need pills. I can't see shit, Chief. Night vision goggles. Now this room is kind of dickish because you've got to crawl through here. And there's a pit right there. <laughs> Lots of dummy soldiers over there. Not dummy in the sense that they're idiots, but literal dummy soldiers. None of these soldiers are real. <laughs> I think this one is real. Yeah. Yeah, there's actual mannequins. There's a ton of them. Now in that room up ahead of us, you can see that there's a ton of uh, white dots. Those are all dummy soldiers, except for three of them. Three of the soldiers in the next room will be real. And I think it's random, which it will be. So we can use the cardboard box to walk onto the screen, and then we can see if any of the ones that are real... I don't know how well it comes up on screen, but you should see three of those dots are flashing. Those are the real soldiers. And fortunately, none of them are looking in my direction. So I should be able to just fucking pop that guy and be on my way. <laughs> We've got more stealth music. So we've got to find Natasha in here, wherever the hell she is. First we've got to go in this room. Get some rations. Now this is the freezer. <clears throat> And what's interesting to note is that now that we've gone in the freezer, our rations are frozen, and we cannot use them for a little while. I'm sure you can see where the uh, fact that there is a freezer is going. There's also a sauna. Isn't that interesting? What oh what could those be for? <laughs> Let's go to the men's room. We've got a bucket chat room. The bucket is the greatest item in the game. It's a metal bucket used to wash lavatories. Look sturdy. Here's the bucket. <laughs> the bucket is identical to the cardboard box, except that it's bulletproof. It is a bulletproof cardboard box. Unfortunately, as you can hear, walking around with the bucket makes noise. So you gotta be... Gotta make sure you uh, don't use it in the wrong spots. So we're waiting for one of these guards to go to the ladies' room.
Let's switch to the box. You just gonna look at it, or are you gonna go inside? They're thinking about it. There we go. Natasha! Yes, I'm Natasha Markova, an STB agent. You look familiar. Haven't we met before? Isn't that the cliche Western men use to seduce a girl? <laughs> Natasha Markova, fairy on ice. Gold medalist at the Olympics in Calgary. I'm sure she's, you know, a trace over of another, like, real actress, but I, I can't place this one. You must be thinking of someone else. Where's Dr. Marv? I contacted him with my transceiver, but I didn't understand what he was saying. He's alright then. Good. Snake, let me borrow your transceiver. His frequency is... Yeah, yeah, okay. So then the, Natasha calls uh, Keo Marv, and they both have a conversation in a language we cannot understand. Maybe somebody in chat can, but I sure can't. <laughs> I barely have a handle on English. Snake Marv is alright at the moment. He's held in a detention center north of the tower building. He's very concerned about Dr. Petrovic. Petrovic is safe. Our first priority is Dr. Marv. This elevator leads to an old sewer. It's a shortcut to the north side of the tower building. An elevator in here? Why is there an elevator in the women's bathroom chat room? Yeah, they were talking in Czech. I don't speak Czech. <laughs> I mean, I've never been inside of a ladies' room. It could be that they all have elevators. I've got no frame of reference. Maybe, maybe they've all got elevators, and I just never knew. Now we're in the basement of the tower building. We've got the cool basement music. As you can see, chat room, we've got some extra things we need to watch out for down here. We've got these, I guess they're sweepers or something. They go by. We've also got pits to deal with. The sweepers, or whatever the hell they are, instantly kill you if you touch them. So, don't. <laughs> I think if we're at the top, we're fine, yeah. This one cannot hit the top of this hallway. High school was fun. I had a... I had a strange experience in high school. <laughs> so we this uh, this this elevator leads to Petrovic. Somehow they smuggled him through the basement through all those death traps, and then they put him in this cell. <laughs> Thank God you're safe. You've lost weight, Petrovic. <laughs> Snake, let's go. Doctor Marv is waiting. I mean, he's all right. I've tried, but this elevator only opens from the inside. Doesn't that mean that he could have left at any point? That's fine, I'm not gonna worry about it. Wait, Snake, I've got something for you. I stole it from a guard. Card 5! So Petrovic gives us card 5. <laughs> we gotta get back through the basement. Oh yeah, we've got a full party. Got the whole squad here. <laughs> Yeah, now we can take on Kefka for sure. Cart 5, here we are. Running like it's a PC-98 game. Yeah. I have the, um... I have the Turbo Fix patch for this game, which makes the frame rate constant on every screen, rather than, you know, variable, depending on how much shit's going on. I don't know if that's better or worse, but what we got. I find it easier to look at. Hey, Snake, I can't bear this much longer. 
Let's rest for a while. Alright, we have time. Let's sit down. Dr. Petrovic has to pee, apparently. Strange. Petrovic is old, though he doesn't look at... No, I meant us. Famous scientist, a former Olympic athlete, special forces member. All brought together here, in this sewer. Is it fate, perhaps? <laughs> Maybe. I was told a lot when I was a child. By my mother. About the Warsaw Uprising and World War II Poland. She ran through a sewer for days and fled from the Nazis. Soaked with mud. Blackened. One couldn't even recognize faces. Still haunted by the war, even today. <clears throat> Natasha, why did you quit skating and join STB? What can I say? The ice. The ice became cold. Nice poetic line there. <laughs> Snake, do you have a wife? No, I have no family. What about you? <laughs> Single. And not because I'm a confirmed bachelor. Maybe I had few chances. <laughs> Only once I actually considered marrying. When I was still fleeting on ice. A grand romance that still makes me breathless. A westerner called Frank Yeager. Handsome, gentle, and intellectual. Wanted to ditch my family, skates, and everything. Just to follow him. Where have I heard the name Frank Yeager before? <laughs> At the last moment, the West declined to accept me. I don't know a lot, for some political reason. Maybe the reception community wasn't ready. Happens all the time. Since then, my family and I have had a hard life. I was stripped from the competition right away, branded as a refusenik. I may have pronounced that word wrong. I could only join STB, but I have no regrets learned many things about this world. I even killed. He ne she never saw Frank Yeager again. The Berlin Wall between us still remained. Are you done peeing now, old man? <laughs> a long, it was a long lavatory time. <laughs> Alright, we're back. Here I go again. Whoops. <laughs> is that what's caking this, uh, sewer tunnel? Is that what all this, like, orangish brown liquid is? <laughs> He's been holding it in the entire game, yeah, that's a good point. We're gonna have to... Gonna have to turn our uh, mind detector back on here. You can see on the radar that there's mines all over the place. However, because we are with a group of people, we cannot crouch to pick them up. So we're going to very carefully, very carefully go over here. A bridge. This bridge leads to the third and final building, or third and final area in the game. Only one at a time. I'll go first, I'm getting on in years. No one will care if anything happens to me. You got that right, old man. It's alright, come on. Then Natasha goes. Stops halfway. Tells us to go too.
Yo, thank you for card six. <laughs> And Petrovic gets captured again. Metal Gear! Oh my god. Snake, it's me, Gray Fox. <laughs> Look how cool Gray Fox looks in this game. <laughs> I prefer this portrait to the portrait they gave him in the Snake Eater version. I won't let you cross this bridge, taking Petrovic with me. We were once friends. I'll let you go this time. Go back to your country at once. <laughs> and then he fucks off with Dr. Petrovic. Who's calling? Snake, have you seen the balcony on the, on the 20th floor of the tower building? From there, you can fly over the crevice using a hang-glider. I saw one on a Thanksgiving festival some time ago. It's in the east part of Zanzibar Building's first floor. That's a good question, Vash. We did save Gray Fox in the previous game. Why would he be working for the enemy? Perhaps that will be extrapolated upon later in the game. <laughs> Pick up these mines. Whoop. There's one. All kinds of free shit in these trucks, but they put mines in the way. Oh, I need this ammo, yeah. More Nikitas, more gas grenades. So now, we need to get back to the, uh... We gotta get back to the first building again. Which should not take too long, because we have this route memorized at this point. And it's also, it's not that long of a walk. Now that we have the next three, uh... We have cards 4, 5, and 6, so we can trade those in for another convenience key card. Man, I don't got time for you fuckos. See you nerds later. Let's go this way. Ah, shit, that was too slow. <laughs> there we go. That's what we want. Absolute, flawless, perfect master stealth. <laughs> what are the chances this guy turns around? Chances were pretty high, I guess. <laughs> we're at the point of the game where our life bar is long enough that we can kind of... We can just kind of run through some of this and not give a fuck. Oh, we've got the angle. There should be a mine right here, so if one of them dares walk down, they'll explode. <laughs> Oh, I do not want to deal with these mines. Hang on. Let's, uh... We need the mine detector. Oh, that's unfortunate. You hate to see that happen. Ooh, you hate to see it happen. <laughs> they forgot where their own mines were. He lived a long life, yeah. Ha! 
Hypothetically, could you just run through it with the bucket and not care? Well, the bucket is only, um, the bucket's only bulletproof if you're standing still, because that's when you go down like this. If you're moving, they can still shoot you. That's the, that's the skinny on the bucket. We're gonna grab the, uh, I think it's the blue card. See if we can pop this guy before he turns around. What direction are you facing, sir? Facing down? Uh, red card. Then card six over here. Blue card. All right. So much more convenient to have two cards instead of six. But they are completely optional to get. That was worth a shot. So we're just gonna get to this elevator. I don't really give a fuck. Oh no, actually, before we get to the elevator, we have one more bit of business to handle on this floor. Go this way. There should be one real soldier in this room. That's oh, the top left one, yeah. There he go. Here's the hang glider. Mandatory for completion of the game. Thankfully, he did not respawn on our way out. That would have been tragic. <laughs> There's a guy coming. I see him. Oh, he dropped ammo. That was nice of him. Whoa. Alright, cool. We should be in the clear. Let's do a lap around this elevator. So we gotta get back up to the, um... <clears throat> we gotta get back up to the fourth floor. The room that had the, uh, the freezer and the sauna and such because we were given as a, as a parting gift from Natasha we were given her brooch and uh I don't know how to tell you this chat room we gotta freeze and we gotta heat this thing <laughs> why why did I get out of the elevator on the second floor hang on yeah we gotta do the old we gotta do the old shape memory alloy, uh, alloy bullshit. I think we're trying to get this away first. What a shot. Catch a cold, go to the medical room. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do we have new information? Want to know a secret? Natasha's brooch will change in a sauna or a freezer. Of all the things that they could have, uh... Of all the things they could have brought into Metal Gear Solid, it had to be this, didn't it? <laughs> this floor we're walking on makes noise, so we need to crawl here because the guards are sleeping.
Obviously, we don't want to wake up this many people. This room is pitch black. This room does not make noise. But if we if we had hit that light switch, we would have woken everybody up. Woken? Is woken a word? I'm not sure. It feels like a word. Here's the sauna. Here's our uh here's our poorly censored guard. <laughs> our poorly censored naked guard. Can't believe my channel's getting banned already. We had a good run, boys. So now the brooch has changed into a key. It is now the hot key. Although I seem to recall it doesn't stay hot for very long. Pills here. That was the uh that was the cold medicine the kids were talking about. We may need the cold medicine. You might think that the cold medicine is for the freezer. Hilariously, it is not. <laughs> Hopefully this key stays hot long enough for us to handle our business. There we are. We needed it to get this cassette tape. The cassette tape plays the Zanzibar Land National Anthem. Ooh, what direction is that guy looking? I think he's heading up. Alright, cool, he turned around. Yeah, the Zanzibar National Anthem... Yeah, let's listen to it again. It does bear a shocking resemblance to, to like, Christmas music. And, you know, as it turns out, this game takes place on Christmas Eve. So maybe they were... Maybe they thought they were being clever. We'll never know for sure. <laughs> yeah, it's basically Die Hard. I mean, would you put it past Kojima? He loves action movies. Gotta deal with this shit again. This is a real guard. Switch to the box here. Alright, we got the same, uh... We got the same cooperative layout of real guards in this room. So now we're back in the cafeteria. We're here to freeze the key. And if we... The deal with freezing the key is, you basically have to do the rest of the game. Uh, you have to do the rest of the game to uh, get to the point where you need to use the cold key. There it is, turning into the cold key. I don't know how long this thing stays cold, but... If we haul ass from this point forward, we should make it in time. And we won't have to backtrack up here to freeze the key. I think we have to, um... We gotta jump through that garbage chute again. So in an effort to... In an effort to not have to freeze this damn thing again, we're gonna be in haul ass mode. <laughs> for some of this.
you play the Walkman in alert mode, does it still work on the guards? I don't think so. I think it only works on, uh... People like this. And then they salute. <laughs> Just take them out. Yeah, I don't think it works during an alert, sadly. Wouldn't that be nice? Yeah, there's a lot of cool items in this game. Very situational items that you don't actually have to use that much. And we're going back down into the sewer. Wrong elevator. The one on the right is out of order down here. Oop, there we go. <clears throat> Gotta go up a floor because there's a couple items we need to do this next bit. Ooh, that was a close one. The guards down here, we're not even gonna fucking participate in this guard bullshit. <laughs> we're here to get some items and then fucking leave. Yeah, he, hear, he heard me, uh, walking up against the wires. I don't feel good about this camera. It's coming back, oh no. So this is the camouflage. It's actually a camouflage mat. You can put it down... And it gives you a thing you can crawl underneath. And then you can pick it back up afterwards. Very cool item. Yeah, I love that shit. It's really cool. <laughs> Got another robot mouse. This is why we were here. The oxygen tank. That is the primary reason we were here. That pit almost got me. You think I got time for these fucking guards? I don't. I don't give a fuck about these guards. Oh, you know what? I gotta be back the other way. This is where we need to be. We should be able to open every door down here pretty much. Is there another one? There he is. <laughs> yeah, pretty much came up with Octo Camo. Here's the SMG. It's essentially just the pistol, but it has auto fire. I don't think we need any grenades right now. Yeah, the pits in this basement, though. They try so hard. I feel like there's a pit in here somewhere. Yeah. As long as you run full speed, though, you're fine. Here's the body armor. Another very important item. But 
What? Button, thank you. Yeah, there's a lot of shit in this game. There's a lot of cool items. Some of them got carried over into the, you know, solid series. Some of them did not. I don't think the robot mouse ever came back. Or maybe it did, and I just don't remember. So the reason we needed the oxygen tank is because we're going for a swim. Yeah, yeah, a lot of the um a lot of the songs in this game were used for Metal Gear Solid's VR missions. Watch out for the mines. Yeah, some of the some of the Metal Gear 1 songs were used for VR missions as well. We've got to swim through about 8,000 screens going north here so that we can catch the other elevator. This is not the staircase we need. This one is. Snake just sneezed because we swam, uh, swam in that water. That's what the cold medicine was for. Thankfully our rations are unfrozen by now so we can use them. We're about to need them. And then we take the elevator back up to the 20th floor. Nope. Nope. Keep going. Yeah, dirty sneeze water. <clears throat> I love this game so much for all the, all the cool shit they thought to put in a game this old. That's strange. The elevator stopped at floor 19. Snake, Gray Fox here. We've got to we've got to deal with Ultra Box, comma close quarters assassins. Top secret team commanded directly by the president. Consider yourself lucky to be cooked by us. <laughs> yeah, the giant Otacon face fight. Gonna equip the SMG in the body armor. Basically, they just kind of jump down, and then they'll fire at you. If you stay next to one of the walls, then the, uh... The one closest to that wall will not jump out at you, so you can... If you stay in a corner, you can make it so you only fight, like, a couple of them at a time. Which is generally what you want to do. You don't want to draw them all out at the same time. One of those fights where it's pretty hard to not take damage. But we've got more than enough rations at this point. I like the concept of a... Uh, I like the concept of an assassination squad that specializes in fighting in small places like elevators. Is there, is there really any training that goes into that? <laughs> Alright, two down. And at this point, we can force them to uh, fight us one at a time. Yeah, why four? I mean... Snake's reputation precedes him, I guess. They thought this was necessary. <laughs> we should almost have this guy. Yeah, he's just chilling because we're next to the left wall. <laughs> he doesn't have room to drop down on us. This guy should have one more hit. Alright, cool. I mean, I'll tank it. I get my health back after this fight. I'll just... 
I'll take all these bullets, I don't care. There he go. There's key card seven. And then the elevator falls down. This elevator does not work anymore. But the other ones on this floor do, so let's go to those instead. <laughs> Yeah, all the bosses in this game, they just they just explode when they die for some reason. <clears throat> they really they really kept that trend alive in the rest of the series, didn't they? <laughs> I remember all of the cobras exploding in Snake Eater. Regardless of whether or not you killed them with a uh, lethal force or not. <laughs> I think we're going uh yeah, we're going up here. No, excuse me. Get out of my elevator. Thank you. Yeah, if you shoot the end in his wheelchair, he still explodes. Alright, here we are. This was the room with the, uh, green pineapples. Now we can finally go left in this room. Uh, C4. <clears throat> This is a situation where you pretty much have to trigger an alert. They set this up so that there's not really any way to avoid it. You can, in theory, get to that door down at the bottom, but even if you do get there without triggering an alert, you'll force an alert on the other side of the door. So, we're just gonna haul ass. This is a scripted sequence. We have to run all the way up to the 20th floor. We have the uh, Metal Gear Solid Spiral Stairs sequence. This is the only time this music plays. Although you're not really... You're not really in any danger here, <laughs> to be honest. Yeah, just like the comms tower. This game, Metal Gear Solid borrowed a lot from this. Got some wires we gotta get through. There's no point shooting any of these people, because they infinitely spawn until you get to the 20th floor. Although I could probably equip the body armor, that's probably a smart thing to do. Where were we? We were, uh, we were running for our lives. Let's, let's do that. This happened last stream, too. I don't know if, um... Oh, there was a pit. That one almost got me. I don't know if it's a problem on my end, or on Twitch's end, or, uh, maybe MSX streams are just cursed because I've only experienced this problem playing MSX games. <laughs> Get this ammo real quick. I'll see if I can't, uh, see if I can't figure that out later. Oh, no, 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 card seven to get in here. And then once you get to this floor, the alert is just over. I don't know how that man didn't see me, but that's fine. Yeah, the MSX is not... it's not taxing on a computer. <laughs> See if we can't just kill everyone to end this alert. Whoop! Whoop! 
Good enough for me. Ah, shit. Got a rash in here. Let's use one of those. Oh, I wonder if I can throw a grenade over there. Does this work? <laughs> Hold on. Nice. That's the tech. Maybe it's the bit rate. I could try lowering that. Uh, I don't know, because I've never... I've done probably like six or seven streams before this one, and I haven't changed any settings, and before it just kind of worked. That's certainly not the case now, but maybe I should change something, yeah. <clears throat> it's me, one of your fans. You can only dive from here when the wind is blowing to the north. Usually it's blowing to the south. But occasionally the direction changes. You may have an item that helps you find out the direction. We sure do. We do have an item that will show us what direction the wind is blowing. It is the what? Well, it is the gas grenade. As we can see, it's blowing to the north. So now's the time to jump. So we equip our hang glider and we jump. Only snake won't move. Why won't snake jump, chat room? Well, this isn't readily explained anywhere, but. Snake is nervous. You have to smoke your cigarettes until you see some smoke come out to calm Snake's nerves. And then you jump. cool gliding music. How are you supposed to figure that out? I have no fucking clue. <laughs> I'll be honest, I used a guide too. <laughs> maybe it's in the, uh, maybe it's in the manual somewhere, but I can't read Japanese. Alright, the key is still frozen. I don't know how long it's going to stay that way. Probably in his bio or something, yeah, maybe. We are going to need the body armor again. We've got another boss. been waiting for you, Snake. I'm Predator. Nobody can beat me in a jungle ambush. Let's see if you are a real snake. No, they're not very subtle with this reference. <laughs> Predator, also known as, a, uh, I think they changed his name to, like, Jungle Evil in the Snake Eater version. Perhaps there was a copyright issue that they wanted to avoid. Because it's not a very subtle reference. <laughs> this is not the most optimal box to hide behind. Let's try over here. Oh yeah, Kojima loves his movies. He said he was, what, like 80% movies or something? He wasn't wrong. Where have you gone, sir? There he is. You can't hit him while he's diving down. For the most part, grenades have a pretty generous... Pretty generous hitbox. Let's switch to our SMG. 
You can get him in this pattern when you have a gun out where he just kind of teleports behind you back and forth. And sometimes he's very cooperative and you can get into this nice rhythm. And sometimes he does not want to play nice. Let's go out into the open. That might make this a little... Let's try it from over here. You bastard. <laughs> you can also use Nikita missiles for this, but we're gonna need those soon enough. Oh, you know what? Let's see what, uh... Let's see what Dolph Lundgren thinks. Predator. A hunter and former Rex Commando. Favors guerrilla tactics. A real animal in the jungle. Is said to have single-handedly annihilated two army ranks in Nam. What a guy, what a guy. How can Snake stand up to this killing machine? Well, very easily, actually. Alright, we've almost got him. There he go. There's card number eight. Oh no, I think we gotta go north here. Yeah, he didn't have the best... He didn't have the best game plan on the planet. There we are. This is where we need to be. Oh, am I gonna make it? Just barely. Which card was this door? We're here to collect two eggs. There's one egg. There's two eggs in here. We're gonna need both of them. I know it sounds silly. But it's better to get them now. So there's, we got two eggs. Species unknown. Inedible. Card eight. <laughs> Snake just grocery shopping, yeah. One of these eggs will be very important. The other one will not. Let's call our animal expert and see what he thinks. I can't tell the type of egg from your description only. It could be from a reptile or a bird. He is technically correct both ways. One egg is one of those, one egg is the other. And much like in Pokemon, we need to walk around to get this egg to hatch. If we keep it uh, selected, we should see it start to crack. Yeah, there it is, cracking. I don't know how he didn't see me, but that's fine. Take all this ammo. Yo, Imasan's here. Hello. How are you doing? Gotta get into this base. And ideally, the guard in front of the door does not move. Alright, so the egg has hatched. Here's the deal, chat room. This egg, this first egg right here, is not helpful. It is actually a snake. What we're going to do is we're going to open our inventory, and we need to capture this snake on our inventory screen before it eats our rations. 
like so. If we had allowed it to reach our rations, it would have ate them, and that would be unacceptable. Not because we need rations to heal ourselves, but because we need rations to complete the game. And you'll see that in just a bit. <laughs> the key is still frozen, that's good. We need this other egg to hatch. Ah, shit. That guy turned pretty quick. If you go into a room with children in it, the alert ends automatically. There cannot be enemies in a room with children. Owls cry at night. They're scary and I can't sleep. At night it's self-powered here, so the high voltage laser fence is cut. Then we can play inside. Welcome to the fantasy zone. Get ready. Yo, thank you for the follow. That information we just picked up was very important. The fact that it needs to be nighttime. However, first we need this egg to hatch. We're just gonna kinda do that by walking around like an idiot. The egg has hatched. I think we still have to walk around a little bit more though. Alright, there it is. So this egg turns into an owl. And the owl hoots, because you see, chat room, when the owls hoot here, that is how the guards know that it is nighttime. So we're going to wait for this owl to make a noise. And because he thinks it's nighttime, he's going to turn that gate off. <laughs> That's how you get in. Good fucking luck figuring out that shit. Yeah, <laughs> tactical owl, yeah. Standard military issue owl. <laughs> Every soldier gets one. Nope. Don't turn. Don't turn. Don't turn. Thank you. <laughs> you can't tell if that's stupid or big brain? <laughs> yeah. The jury's still out on that one. Back down to the basement. We're almost at the end of this game. We're, we're very close. We have a phone call. It's me, one of your fans. Snake beware. Ever heard of the legendary Gorilla Squad whispers? Night Sight, a survivor of that squad, is in the room. Night Sight. You can't see him, but you might hear him. And sure enough, this room has, uh, this boss arena has four different surfaces, and all of them make a different sound when you walk on them. Now, in theory, you're supposed to use that to uh, identify where he is. Or you can just wait for him to start shooting at you and then shoot back. <laughs> I find that to be the more effective option. Let's see what, uh, see what our boy Ivan Drago thinks. Night Sight? Snake, did you say Night Sight just now? Survivor from a squad even more skilled than the Green Berets. His camouflage suit is superior to anything we have ever seen. So this is what you usually want. You want to get him... You want to get Night Sight in a spot like this corner. And then you just fucking drill him until he dies. You'll take a lot of hits in the process. But that's fine, we've got rations. 
Not a whole lot to this one. You know what's weird? You know what's weird about the stream, uh... The stream messing up right there is it happened at about the exact same time it happened last stream. <clears throat> when I was playing through the Metal Gear 1, uh... That started to happen about two hours into the stream. And that's exactly what happened this stream, too. It's weird how it's at, like, the exact same time. Could be a network issue. Yeah, maybe. I don't know. I'm not actually... I'm not very smart when it comes to these technical problems. So hopefully I can work something out. The reason I paused the game is so I can draw attention to these acid puddles. If you step on these... You will die instantly. Unless... Unless you have chocolate in your inventory. The combat ration B1 contains chocolate, so you equip these rations. And then you can neutralize the acid puddles. <laughs> and then we get to this door. Yeah, I'm as confused as you are, don't worry about it. Then we get to this door and we realize that none of our none of our key cards work. Now I don't know how you're supposed to find out what to do here. But uh you leave the room, you go back in, and you get a call. Predator should have had card number nine. Do you mean card eight? He had card eight. No, he was in charge of both card eight and nine. He must have dropped it. Search his area. So we've got some some classic backtracking here. <laughs> we gotta go back to uh, Predator's arena and pick up this card. And then run right back. We'll try to do it as quickly as we can. Because I don't know how much time is left on this frozen key. If it stays frozen, we won't have to backtrack anymore, which would be great. So we're just going to kind of say, fuck alerts. Go get this card, run right back. Try and get this done as swiftly as possible. <laughs> yeah, thanks, super fan. <laughs> Uh-oh. Thank goodness it was that card. <laughs> yeah, I see you. I gotta hit this switch to turn the fence off. No, wait. Wait, wait. There we go. Alright, see you, Vash. To try to catch the rest of this on VOD. Yo, this VOD is gonna be a disaster. It's gonna be in so many pieces. <laughs> really, that's my primary concern with the stream dropping, is the VOD will be a big mess. Nice, so we gotta get back in here. Card number eight, or uh, card number nine, rather is over in this corner. I don't know why they, uh... I don't know why card 9 exists. You only use it for one door in the game. It has fallen again. Are we referring to the stream? Has the stream fallen? Is that what's fallen, or is something else fallen? Alright, cool. Yeah, you, uh, you actually cannot get card 9 right when you kill Predator. <laughs> you have to, you have to try to open that door, fail at it, and then you go back and get card 9. Oh yeah, it's it's the most blatant backtrack in the game. <laughs> I don't know why they make you do it. You just gotta you just gotta fucking do it. 
I guess they decided to just kind of be a dick right at the end. But that's fine. We can deal with this game's bullshit. <laughs> Yo, what's up, GVG? Welcome to the, uh... Welcome to the disaster stream where nothing works properly. <laughs> or at least it had been up until recently. Stream is holding up now, but it certainly wasn't a short while ago. How longer am I going to stream? Not that much longer. The stream's probably... Well, this game, we're right at the end of the stream, so not too much longer. Here we have Dr. Petrovic and Dr. Keo Marv. We arrived too late. Dr. Keo Marv is dead. There are stains around his neck. Don't worry, Snake. Even after Marv died, the Oilix plans will stay intact. Marv was a cautious man. He was also a games freak. He concealed a microfilm in the circuit board of a cartridge. An MSX cartridge. From a Japanese company called Konami. <laughs> MSX, the legendary worldwide computer! Nice. Nice plug. He kept that cartridge in the locker over there. So here's the thing, chat room. We got a phone call. Snake, we have an emergency. About Petrovic, I was curious, so I dug up some info on him. After he was rescued from outer heaven, he was not too happy. In the West, his extreme dogmatic theories weren't accepted. The academic world saw him as a scholar of madness. He was isolated. As time passed, he became forgotten. One day, he got an invitation from a Zanzibar double agent. Taking advantage of his position, he made a deal. He leaked the latest technologies to Zanzibar land. He must also be in the, uh, involved in the kidnapping of Marv. He knew all the details about Marv's trip to the USA. What? I see. I understand now, GVG. <laughs> Did you drop in and <laughs> ask how long I was going to stream so you could raid? That's the tech. I'm going to steal that raid tech. That's good. <laughs> Thank you for the raid. Such was the story, Snake. I set my hopes on your world. I left the country I lived in for a long time, but your people criticized everything I did. Wanted to use my robotology knowledge. I wanted to complete Metal Gear, but your politicians weren't interested. They all talked about SDI, NEDW, brain bombs, and the like. But Zanzibar was interested. I upgraded Metal Gear with their help. Did you do in Dr. Marv? I had to. He wouldn't give me the Oilix plans. I have no idea what a brain bomb is. That's a good question. Natasha died on the bridge because I informed Gray Fox. When you went to relieve yourself in the sewer, that was a hell of a bathroom break. So here's the deal. Here's the deal. Dr. Petrovic, this old fucking man, latches onto your neck and starts choking you. You have... You have no way to hit him from the front. So what do you do? That's a fantastic question. First, we're going to equip this body armor. We're going to equip our Nikita missiles. And we're going to start shooting at ourselves. <laughs> What? What? Oh, hold on. Let's, uh, let's use another ration. <laughs> Alright. We're out of Nikita's, so we're gonna start blowing ourselves up with mines. There we go. We got him. The key is still frozen. Alright, cool. We were able to get to the uh, cold key door just in time. Alright, so... 
Yeah, this is the uh, this is the end game right here. If we crawl in this hole, we'll see that this room is full of mice. The thing is, those mice are poisonous, and they will kill us in a single touch. So we need to equip our gun, and we need to equip Ration B3, which contains cheese, and the mice will start to funnel out. We need to shoot all of them so that we can get in there. You will die in one hit if you allow them to touch you. Alright, that's all of them. There's the Oilix plans on that MSX cartridge. And as soon as you pick that cartridge up, that is the point of no return. Snake, he will never let you go. He'll use that Metal Gear deliberately. My daughter Ellen, how to destroy it. I couldn't cross the wall between East and West in my mind, but she's different. For Ellen, who I left in the East, I feel like there was more to that sentence. It just kind of stopped. Start making sense. How do you destroy Metal Gear? The legs are lightly armored, just like the previous Metal Gear. Destroy them with grenades. So we've got to bomb his legs, just like in the last game. Thankfully, it's not nearly as bad <laughs> this time. Deadly poisonous Zamzabar hamsters. Yeah, that sounds right. A snake, there's no way to destroy this Metal Gear. Self-delusion of that old git of a scholar. <laughs> You'll see me soon, Snake. Come through the north door. One moment. Hold on. Get to you in a second, Gray Fox. What? Hold on. Hold on. Excuse me. Here we go. We need the grenades. Which door is it? Or which card is it? Here we go. We're at Metal Gear, boys and girls. I and this Metal Gear were different than before. Taste true fear and humility. So here's the deal with Metal Gear. If Metal Gear runs you over, you die. So you gotta stay on his side. Also, if flashing lights are a thing that bothers you, close your fucking eyes for this fight. <laughs> Don't say I didn't warn you. He's got two weapons. He's got the machine gun, and he's also got the, uh, the homing missiles. They don't track very well, though. And they fly very slow. They're not effective missiles in any way, shape, or form. What? Yeah, the lights are deadlier than Metal Gear. <laughs> Shouldn't take too much more, I don't think. I think we got him. Yeah. Woo! That's some... That's some old video game flashing there. Snake, I will take the cartridge. Burn and die. So we we defeated Metal Gear, but now we're on fire. We're quite literally on fire. <laughs> What's Colonel's number? I think Colonel changed his number to this one. Or whatever. Anyway. Point is, all our items are on fire. And the only way to stop ourselves from being on fire is to toss every item 
we have. We need to throw everything away. You want to toss your rations last so you have full health? So now we've got no items, we've got no weapons, we've got nothing. Let me ask you something, chat room. Do you remember in Metal Gear Solid when Snake said that he and Gray Fox fought barehanded in a minefield? If you look on the radar, you'll see this room is covered in mines. You always were my big rival in Foxhound. I was eager for the day I could settle up with you. Learn the value of the Fox title. Gray Fox, former Foxhound agent, true name Frank Yeager. The last man to bear the Fox title from the Big Boss days received five awards. I know about his excellence. I know best. I was his junior. He's a cool-minded hunter who never misses what he seeks. All members revered him and loved him. You know about his foxhound days. And about his past? A relationship with a woman in the East ten years ago? First they tried seeking asylum. After that, and over the fence, it all failed. America would not grant her a green card. That's Natasha they're talking about. What's the name of the woman? A former Olympic skater. Natasha Markova is her name. If you beat Fox, you're the best mercenary in the world. We sure are. So basically, uh, you just punch Gray Fox. <laughs> I mean, there's nothing else to say. He runs around and then he, 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 he dashes in for a punch. Once you punch him, he backs off. <laughs> so that's all there is to it. Got some, got some MSX CQC here. Obviously, because we're fist fighting, this might take a while. It takes a lot of hits to put him down. Whoop. Oh, you'll die first, you piece of shit. You'll definitely die first. <laughs> yeah, this is the uh, legendary minefield fist fight that the two had. <laughs> it doesn't look like much on MSX, but it's a cool anecdote. Oh, what is this rhythm I've got him in? This is the so this is the fucking stance right here. I just learned a new Gray Fox strat on the spot. <laughs> Almost got him. There we go. Snake, perhaps it's time to hand the Fox title to you. Fox, why this? I am, unlike you, in an awkward position. Big Boss might have only been a, su a supervisor to you, but he saved my life twice, long before I joined his troop. First time was in Vietnam. At that time, half-white men were discriminated against. We were forced to work hard labor, even after the war was over. But he helped me out, or he helped me out of that living hell, like the children here. Second time was in Mozambique. Saved me when I was tortured as a Renamo soldier. You think you're paying him back? No. I hate war. Just like the children here. But... I need war. We cannot live in normal societies. We're warriors. We need battlefields. The boss provides us areas in which to fight. Doesn't this sound familiar? You cannot fool the fighting instinct inside you. I was born on the battlefield. And there I shall die. Making others fortunate, especially women, is not possible. Dying in action suits me. Fox, rest assured, I will never be like you. <laughs> Your words, 
I'll bring it to the afterlife as a souvenir. Do well, Snake. Don't belie your fans' expectation. <laughs> so yeah, uh, just like in Metal Gear Solid, Gray Fox is the person making the calls. You're not alone, Frank. Natasha waits for you on the other side. You kind of killed her yourself, Frank. But uh, that's fine, I'm not gonna worry about that. There he go. We've got the Oilix cartridge back. But we're not done yet. Here, Snake. <laughs> yeah, for some reason the mines in this room are gone. <laughs> We've got one more fight chat room. Big boss. So you are alive. Snake. Welcome to Zanzibar land. <laughs> You've come back to me just as I thought you would. Guess what, chat room? Big boss is Sean Connery. <laughs> Just straight up Sean Connery with an eye patch. <laughs> it's pretty good. Come here to get rid of the nightmares. <laughs> it's pretty good. <laughs> nightmares, there's no way to exercise them, Snake. He who experiences the joy and tension of battle will place himself on battlefields for the rest of his life. <laughs> Once the battle instinct surfaces, it never sleeps again. The only thing that can fulfill your desire is not money, power, or sex. It's only one thing. War. <laughs> and I am providing it. Giving you a means to live. <laughs> You've seen those children. Victims of war from many nations. And budding soldiers for the next war. Ploy, assist, make victims, nurse and train, and back to the battlefield again. Conflicts will never die in this world. Our goal, and also a way of life. <laughs> Without war, you'd be out of a job, is that what you're saying? You and me, though of rare value on the battlefield, are just useless dummies back home. We belong on the battlefield. We'll stay here until we die miserably. I've only one battle. To be free from you, to rid myself of the nightmares... Big Boss, I will defeat you. <laughs> Whoever wins, the battle will not end. The loser shall be freed from the battlefield, but the winner stays. He'll be a warrior until his death. There are exceptions. I love life. Solid Snake loves his life. I don't know about that one. My gratitude as your former supervisor. <laughs> In this situation, without a single weapon, against me, you dare say you have a chance? <laughs> oh yeah, that's true, he does like, uh, he does like being a, an Alaskan dog musher. Snake, this time, once and for all, come on. Alright. So this is the final boss of the game. Big boss. However, we've got no weapons, Chief. So what we gotta do is, first of all, we have to collect this ration. Because there's acid around that we need to deal with. This is a this battlefield has eight rooms in it. This one has ID card six. I don't think ID card six actually does anything. But basically we have to work our way through these rooms using the key cards that we find. And eventually, we'll end up with something that could at least be called a weapon. <laughs> but first we need to find card one so that we can get this moving. So we're going to completely ignore Big Boss until we have a means to fight him. We gotta use a ration for this puddle. Now that we have ID card one, we have to figure out where to put it. We will avoid Big Boss's gunfire as best we can. Because it doesn't deal a small amount of damage. And we don't want to deal with that shit. 
Whoop. Whoop, that's not it. It's not the acid puddle. <clears throat> the sequence tends to take a while. <laughs> the power of the greatest soldier who ever lived. He 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 put some key cards in a room for Snake to find. <laughs> What a guy, what a guy. I believe our uh, I believe ID card 2 goes on the bottom somewhere. But he's down there. That's not a thing we want to deal with. I don't think it's that room. Let's try one of these. Is it you? No. Bluto, it's not a makeshift flamethrower. Oh, here it is. This room looks empty, but there's ID card 3. I imagine somebody got stuck there before. <laughs> Whoa! His gun doesn't do a small amount of damage. There's ID card 4. What? Yeah, really shaking it up, putting it in the crawly hole. <laughs> they try to get you with these acid puddles. They put them right in your way in these rooms. There's a lighter. The lighter will be necessary. Uh oh. There is the hairspray. Now, Bluto, I know I told you that we weren't making a makeshift flamethrower. I lied. <laughs> we have a makeshift flamethrower. That's all we've got. Now, you remember how uh, in Metal Gear Solid 1, they said that Big Boss was badly burned. Here's how it happened. <laughs> Snake ran around like an idiot for a while until he could find a makeshift flamethrower. <laughs> and then he burned Big Boss to death. <laughs> this is usually where you want to be in this uh, box situation because he's not smart enough to really go around. <laughs> hold on. Hold on. Come this way. What are you doing? Okay, now he's moving. Woo! Yeah, this is how Kiefer Sutherland died. Actually, which big boss is this? I know that the big boss at the end of the first game and the big boss at the end of the second game, like one of them was one of them was Venom Snake, right? I think the first game is big boss. Yeah, yeah, the first one was Medic. This is actually this this one's actually big boss. There we go. <clears throat> There he go. Yeah, an explanation for a question no one was asking. That's a good way to put it. Uh-oh. Just kidding, it's Holly. Yeah, somewhere in the somewhere in the shuffle here, we've completely forgotten about Holly. <laughs> here, I took this gun from an enemy. Now, how do we get out of here? Shall I call you a limo? <laughs> 
So Snake calls in a uh, Snake calls in Charlie, the helicopter pilot, who is up to this point not existed. This is the first we're hearing of this Charlie guy. Mission completed. Please pick me up. Roger, I'll meet you at the pickup point. Any guests? One, a blonde beauty. <laughs> So all we gotta do now is leave. <clears throat> all we gotta do is get to the extraction point. Small problem. If you look in the room ahead of us, you'll see that there's dudes there. There is no way around this alert. So here's the escape music. <laughs> all we gotta do now is just get to the chopper. Do I want that ration? No, I've got two. Gotta turn this elevator on. But we also have to wait for the elevator to get here. So we're just gonna fucking spray this hallway until the door opens. Yeah, this, this pistol has unlimited ammo. <laughs> now we're outside. We've still got dudes to deal with. They don't stop until the game is over. These are some these are some poorly placed wires. <laughs> Alright, so this is the last screen. Charlie, you're late. Christmas will be over soon. <laughs> this is Charlie, I'm still ten kilometers away. Hang on. <laughs> so we have to wait for Charlie to get here. So basically we just have to hold out as best we can. Until the chopper finally arrives. Also of note, there's a pit in this room. Don't die to that shit. <laughs> I think if we keep spraying this hallway, we'll be in good shape. Uh-oh. Oh, it's getting messy. Yeah, where the fuck is Charlie? <laughs> what? It does- it takes him a little while to show up. I got bad news, chat room, we're out of ammo. Charlie shows up in the nick of time. Where's Raiden? Raiden ain't in this game. <laughs> yeah, Merry Christmas, everyone. We wrapped it up just before Christmas. <clears throat> now we've got the incredibly small credits window. <laughs> Replay this on Christmas Eve, you got it. <laughs> there we go, off into the sunset.
I love how the text barely fits in the box. <laughs> so yeah, that's Metal Gear 2. This, uh, yeah. It's probably my personal favorite Metal Gear game. I love this game so much. It's got some, it's got some jank in it, don't get me wrong. Like, following the Green Beret sometimes doesn't work. And there's a, there's a fair amount of backtracking, but... I don't know. This game's fucking sick. I love this game. And I feel like I've been streaming for like four hours or something. It's been a minute. This game is much longer than the first Metal Gear. Yeah, I, yeah, definitely one of the best metal, uh, one of the best MSX games. I'll have to. Um, you want to know? You want to know an MSX game I gotta play at some point? I mean, I've played it before, but I want to stream it so more people can see it. MSX Castlevania. That game, MSX Castlevania, has so much cool shit in it. No, Vash, hear me out though. That game is so good. Like, people are so- people are familiar with, like, NES Castlevania. I think the MSX version is actually better. Okay, it is kind of ugly, though. That's fair. Yeah, contrary to how uh, how few credits were in the intro sequence, there's actually a very there's a there's a decent sized team that worked on this game. I mean, they had to really for how groundbreaking this shit was at the time. I'm not surprised it took a lot of people. It's like Simon Belmont walked into a thrift store to find the dirtiest clothes he could. I mean. I mean, there's 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 uglier versions of Castlevania we could be playing. <laughs> I gotta play Haunted Castle on stream, the arcade one. <laughs> Fucking Amiga Castlevania. Oh, that that'd be a cool uh, that'd be a cool stream night. Just playing like bad versions of good games. Play like the uh, the MSX version of Outrun, where it looks like shit. <laughs> or was that like the Commodore? There's a really bad looking Outrun. <laughs> Castlevania Judgment. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> DOS Mega Man. Da uh, dude, we've gotta have a DOS Mega Man stream. That that game is so fucking dank. <laughs> Game design Hideo Kojima. Samurai Showdown RPG. I'm actually not familiar... I'm not familiar with the Samurai Showdown RPG. I don't know if it was good or not. <laughs> like, I'd be down to play it. I love Samurai Showdown. I, I, I don't know. I've never... I've never actually laid eyes on it. Well done, Snake. How about it? Back to our squad. Yo, what's up, Zether? There's a name I recognize. Paris Dakar Rally Special. <laughs> Wanna try opening the cartridge? No need to, I'm sure it's the right one. Insert it into an MSX. It's a good thing. It's a good thing Colonel has a, his old MSX handy. <laughs> so those words at the bottom, you want to read that shit backwards. If you read the VRAM 01K backwards, it says Kiyomarv.
Now the world is saved. We've done it, chat room. We saved the world. Again. Welcome to the fantasy what? zone. Get ready. Thank you for the follow. What a guy, what a guy. He died entangled in a stupid game of politics. But he left a game that saved us all, didn't he, Snake? And then Snake fucking bails. Snake immediately bails to go to Alaska. <laughs> he fucking retires on the spot. <laughs> And here's our, uh, here's our cast. <laughs> oh my god, Colonel! Snake and his relationships with women do not last long at all, no. Not one bit. <laughs> Albert Einstein! Doesn't Miller die soon? Doesn't Miller just fucking... Doesn't he get sniped in his, like, Alaska house or something? Or not Alaska, wherever he lives in the first game. Yeah, Madnar is random, spelled backwards. Ooh, Snatcher, that's a good stream idea. Haven't played Snatcher on stream yet. The hind D. Metal Gear D. That's a one of the cooler looking Metal Gears. And last but not least, Mel Gibson himself, Solid Snake. <laughs> yes, this is Mel Ass Gibson. <laughs> Alright, and that is Metal Gear 2, Solid Snake. You're not given a ranking. You're not given a ranking. They, they start that in the next game. That is gonna do it for me. I'm glad that people came out to watch that. I'd like to thank everybody who followed and posted and raided and all that good stuff. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute, where's my... Aha! Every so often... Every so often I remember I have that. I don't know what the next stream is going to be, but it's probably going to be on, um... When do I usually stream? I don't currently have a schedule, unfortunately, because my living situation does not permit such a thing. So I just kind of stream whenever I can. The next one, I'll, I'll try to stream on Monday. I'd like to get into some kind of a rhythm where we stream, like, every Monday and Friday. But as soon as I commit to that, I'm not going to be able to hold up to it, so I'll, I'll, do, I'll do my best. <laughs> That's all I can say. All that being said, uh, where are we going, boys? Who are we raiding? Is anybody on right now? Looks like Gary's on. Could stream, or could, could raid the boys' Isaacs. Gary's doing bloody roar. Aw, oh, say no more. I'm in there. Z Y Z X, whoops, raid Z Y Z X underscore. We're about to swoop in on some, about to swoop in on some bloody roar chat room. I don't, I don't have a raid message. Just fucking, I don't know. Drop a raccoon in there. That's the raid message. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so I'll, I'll see you all on Monday, maybe. I don't know what we're going to be playing, but it's going to be fun. <laughs> see you all next time.